Hadrian's Wall is one of the most famous defensive fortifications in Britain, and spans a total of 75 miles across northern England. It's known as a wall marking the boundary between Roman Britain and the unconquered Caledonia, and work began on it in 112 AD, during the reign of Emperor Hadrian. It ran from the banks of the River Tyne, to close to the Solway Firth on the Irish Sea. It stands as a sheer site of Roman dominance, and a message to those north of the wall to stay away. But the Romans didn't just build a wall to keep out those referred to as barbarians by Hadrian's biographer. Along the wall there are many different fortifications, and also forts built to hold garrisons of soldiers, should they be needed to deal with the enemy. Today we look at one of these, Housestead's Roman Fort, which today features some of the greatest remains of Roman architecture found across Britain. Remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. By the early 2nd century AD, the Romans had been in Britain for around 60 years, and they were mightily successful across the nation. It was believed around the early 100 ADs that the Romans would continue north through to Scotland, but when Emperor Hadrian came to rule, things changed. He began to fortify and consolidate the different borders across the empire, and focused on solidifying what he had, rather than looking to conquer more. Because of this, in 122 AD, he visited Britain and he ordered the creation of Hadrian's Wall, which served as a frontier for the northern part of the Roman Empire. Work began immediately, and the plan was for at every mile a fortified gateway with two turrets to be made, to help strengthen the positions. These are known as mile castles, with one of these today being found close to Housestead's Fort. So along with constructing the wall, the Romans built forts to hold garrisons of soldiers to man these positions, and also to protect the empire should they be needed. Work on Housestead's Fort began around AD 123, with a fortification being built in stone. Decisions had been taken to create new forts, and Housestead's was known as Verco Visium, or a place of brilliant fighters, showing that strong forces would have been based here. Its shape was rather traditional, and it spanned an area of around 5 acres. Inside the fort were a number of key administration buildings, including at the centre a headquarters building, and also the commander's house. The rest of the fort was occupied by barracks, service buildings and other buildings needed to service a garrison, such as a hospital, a bathhouse and much more. It was designed to hold an auxiliary infantry regiment of around 800 soldiers, with one of the first garrisons being stationed there, being part of the first cohort of Tungrians, a group of soldiers recruited from modern day Belgium. Later a Frisian cavalry unit would also make up part of that garrison. Following Emperor Hadrian's death, the garrison was ordered to advance north to establish a new frontier, with the garrison being reassigned. In their place came a detachment from the 2nd Augustan Legion, which moved into the fort, but after a few decades with the end of the new frontier, the Tungrians would return to Housesteads. During the 3rd century it was made much bigger, during the reign of Septimius Severus, because at the time there were groups of Caledones causing problems for the Romans. These were described by Romans as having large limbs and red hair, and they were fierce people who were eager to fight the Romans, and they greatly resisted them. Modifications to Housesteads were made to expand the military presence, and it shows us how real the threat the tribes of the north caused the Romans. As time passed other units may have been based at the fort, including the first cohort of Hamian bowmen, a group of archers who were recruited from modern day Syria. Throughout the 4th century, changes continued at Housesteads, with a civilian settlement or a vicus that was established outside the fort's walls, which slowly made its way within the perimeter of the fort. A number of barracks which had been made exclusively for soldiers, were now converted into buildings suitable to accommodate a soldier and their family. It remained occupied up until the end of Roman Britain, and because of its remote location it became useless for supporting large settlements of soldiers. As the times changed into the Dark Ages and the Medieval period, there was little evidence of the site changing or being occupied. It did become a shelter for thieves and raiders, who operated in the border region which was considered lawless. What we're now going to do, is show you around the different parts of the incredible Roman Housestead's fort. Remember that what we are looking at is the remains of a fort created almost 2000 years ago. Today you enter the fort via the south gate. This would have been a large gateway and entrance to the whole fort. This gate would have also led to the community that was living just outside the walls of the fort, and would have been manned by soldiers, 
checking who was entering or leaving the area. This gateway today is in good condition, as you can see there are also different rooms inside this area. One of the most important parts of any Roman fort was the commander's house or the commanding officer's house. This was a typical Roman style house, designed as a Mediterranean villa, which sounds bizarre considering this villa with its incredible architecture would have been battered by the awful weather in the north of England. It was where the commander would retire to and get some rest, and he would be here with his family living inside, and he also would have been served by a number of household staff and slaves. The commander's house would also be an office and administration centre for the commander, and sometimes his houses would have been fitted with underfloor heating, and this could have been inside the dining room. This would have been a beautiful and impressive part of Halstead's fort. One of the most unusual parts of Halstead's is the fact that there's a hospital within the fort structure. It sits next to the headquarters building and in its layout is similar to the commander's house and would have had a courtyard in the middle surrounded by smaller rooms. Interestingly the hospital may have been created with the expectation of vicious fighting which would have been taking place along the border and it was a key part of the fort's daily running to maintain the health of the soldiers that were garrisoned there. One of the rooms in this area could have been an operating theatre, as it's much bigger than the others, and a latrine is found in the southwesterly corner of the structure. Although the commander's house was very important, the headquarters building was probably the most important part of life for the fort. It was the administration centre and the focus of religious life inside. It sits in the middle of the fortification and would have been easily accessible when you entered through the main eastern gate. Its design was based on a town forum, with a courtyard in front, with rooms added towards the back. There was a hall inside this area, and five rooms coming off it, including a shrine, where the standard of the garrison was kept, and also a number of offices could be found. There was also a strong room here, which could have been used to store the army's pay inside, and other valuables. From this area the commander could address his troops, or his centurions at a daily morning briefing, and during this passwords would be set to allow access to the fort. These could then be changed each day for security. Unusually, Housesteads is a fort that has no water supply, as most other Roman structures like this had aqueducts. Water would have been collected from the roofs in tanks across the site, and the location of the fort wasn't ideal for constructing aqueducts, as it's on a ridge. Water could also be carried uphill to the fort. The east gate was the main entrance and it's found to the south of Hadrian's Wall. It was well used and was the way the military would have entered the fort, with a path leading to the headquarters building. The entrance would have been spectacular and imposing, and there would have been two flanking towers near to here, in which the guards could have monitored the flow of people coming in and out of the area. The barracks were the main place where the soldiers would spend the majority of their time. There would have been 10 barrack buildings with each housing 80 men in 10 rooms, with two room apartments for the officers at the end of these. The rooms were around 10 feet square and it would have been rather crowded inside these rooms where soldiers would live and sleep. Later in the 3rd century as mentioned, a number of the barracks were adapted to be replaced by smaller dwellings or chalets in which families would live with the soldiers. At this time the size of the garrison had shrank significantly and this allowed space for wives and families. At the latter part of the 3rd century, a new big building was added where one of the barracks had previously stood. This building's purpose isn't known, but it could have been used as a place to collect taxes, and it would have also had a second floor. It was later demolished to make way for the bathhouse during the 4th century. The north gate originally consisted of a huge ramp, and was made so the gate could have been accessed, but due to the steepness of the approach, this became abandoned. In this area there was a big water tank to take rainwater off the roof, and it was the only access north of the wall. To solve the steep issue, another gate was built, but additional towers were built into the north gate to improve security. The north entrance would have needed to be heavily guarded, with it backing onto the wall, and there would have been a constant watch here to ensure that the northern tribes were not encroaching. The fort also had two granaries, but these may have been together as one large structure at one time. This would have been a room used to keep food and goods cool, which could have been used for cooking and feeding the soldiers. The floor of this building was built on stilts to give ventilation underneath the floor to keep vermin away, and also there are a number of vents in the walls to keep the food cool. 
The West Gate is one of the best preserved gates along the whole of Hadrian's Wall, and both of the portals would have been blocked, and this would have been kept secure. One of the most interesting parts of Housesteads is the Vicus that established itself just outside of the fort's walls. It was a civil settlement that would have operated here. A number of different rooms would have been found, such as rooms for families to live, taverns, workshops and also shops. One room in this area is also known as a murder house, as two Roman bodies found under a newly laid floor were found, and one was found with a tip of a blade between their ribs. The Vicus was later abandoned. So Halstead's Fort today remains a remarkable ruin of Roman Britain, and you can really see how the garrison of soldiers would have lived almost 2,000 years ago at the site. It's a gem of a hidden piece of history, and one which must be preserved for centuries to come. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.